Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today we're talking about plastics and how they are made by a process called polymerization. Here I have a few plastics, such as this milk uh, jug, this milk bag, we have the recycling bag, and some of the more responsible companies are printing what type of plastic it is on the container so we can more easily recycle them. For example, if you look at this milk container, you will see that it's got a little triangle, and in the triangle is a small little seven. So that's the type of plastic it is. Here we have a triangle with a small, small little four. So that four is the type of plastic. Even the recycling bag has got a four on it, so it's the same type of plastic. And in fact, we're going to look at three types of plastic. This first one, which has got a four, is polyethylene. Polyethylene, and those are the plastics that have a little recycling four. If they have a five, polypropylene, they have a three, they are polyvinyl chloride. So PVC, that would be a 3. If it has a 7, it means it belongs to just a general category. All the rest of the plastics which they can't put into any specific group. Now, how are plastics made? Well, they're made in a process called polymerization, but there's various types of polymerization. The first is addition. Now, remember with addition, we have double bonds. And... We have, if we have a hydrogen here, do you recognize this? Two carbons, double bond, ethene. If we take two ethenes, we break their bond and we join them together into, forget about those hydrogens, we join them together into single bonded compound. This is in fact uh, butane. But it carries on. We can add more of these ethenes, keep on joining them to a long chain. We eventually end up with a plastic. And finally, just on the two ends, we have two additional hydrogens. So basically, it's we take these little repeating units, which we call monomers, and we make one thing, which we call a polymer. And the process of adding monomers to make a polymer is called polymerization. Now notice that in addition, we just broke bonds. There was nothing additional that we had to add to this. We just added the one to the other and they became a long chain. So depending on what we start with. Now if we took this hydrogen off and we put here a CH3, CH3, we would end here with CH3, CH3. Now look at this monomer. There's one, two, three carbons. Doesn't matter that the chain bends, that is propene. Right? You take two propenes, you join them together in a long chain, but such that there's a little branch CH3 or a methyl group, methyl group. Now you get the plastic polypropylene. Do you see where the prop fits in there? Propylene. From the fact that it started with propene. And if we were to instead start with chlorine. Right, there's a still a hydrogen. Let's put chlorine, 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 and chlorine there. So, if we started with this, which is ethene with a chlorine, chloroethene, if that was our monomer, we would end up with polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, a very useful substance that's used for making gutters and these plumbing pipes and so on, and in electrical work, electrical conduits, etc., so all plastics are very useful and we need to recycle them so we can recycle them using our weekly garbage um, allows us to put all our plastics in and recycle them 
or we could take our plastics. Here we have a little plastic container and I've just taken an apple seed, placed it in the fridge for a month or two in cotton wool, wet cotton wool to grow. So here I've got now a nice little fruit tree growing in my recycled plastic. Here you see I've taken one of these milk bags, same thing, taken the pip from uh, a fruit, put it in the fridge for a few months in wet cotton wool, and finally when it sprouts, I plant it in one of these bags, and now we can grow this tree till it's nice and big, and then transplant it into the garden. Or, perhaps we could recycle them this way. Here is an old washing bottle. And what I've done is I've cut a few wings in the side of the bottle, on either side. And now, that spins in the wind. And it can be used, if you place it on a stick in the garden, to chase away the moles, those little pesky things that go in burrows under the ground. Here's another one, the Mark II version, or the Mark III version. It's got one, two three little wings, looking at its side on, you see the little wings sticking out, and then that goes also onto the end of a stick, and when the wind blows, it spins, and the moles hate that noise, and believe me, it does actually chase the moles away. So that's, we can try and make industries that make use of our old plastic bottles, or we can simply recycle them, which means plastic the, the name means that they're able to be bent and shaped. If you heat them to a certain point, thermoplastics, they will melt and then we change their shape, mold them into, a, say, a children's toy. And then when it, when it cools, it's then reshaped into that child's toy. So plastics can potentially go on for a very long time. And that is why we must recycle them, otherwise they will just lie around on the ground for it for a very long time like we sometimes see with plastic bags. Now there's another way in which we can polymerize substances. We can do it by a process called condensation. Condensation means we take out a water molecule. And condensation starts with an alcohol and what looks like a carboxylic acid here. Just notice what we're going to do. We're going to take, you see an OH group, OH on the end, this is a double alcohol, right? And here is our C double bond OH, it's a carboxylic acid. And when we have an alcohol and a carboxylic acid, and we join the two with a loss of a water molecule, so plus H2O, that we, we saw that process happening when we discussed esters. So this is esterification type of reaction, otherwise known as condensation. Water is lost. So where water is lost, a condensation reaction, it's, it's an esterification reaction because we have a carboxyl group with an alcohol group. Get rid of the water. Join the alcohol and carboxyl groups together, and now we have something that is made out of two molecules. We keep on repeating the process. You see we have an OH here, and that can again join to another. We have a C double bond OOH group here that can join to another OH group, and so the process could keep on repeating, and this substance here is polyester, which I'm sure everybody's heard of. I might even be wearing polyester. So polyester is one of those things that's a plastic spun into a fiber. It's, it's spun into a fiber and it's very wearable. We can also, polyester can also be made into things like toys, etc. So it doesn't have to always be a fiber, but it's mold resistant, it's, got, it's strong, it's got many good qualities. So that's the two ways in which we make um, polymers by addition or by condensation. In this case, here are our monomer units, our repeating units that go to make one long thing called the polymer. And depending on the monomer that we start with, so we get a different polymer. And in the case of plastics, 
They've got their various recycling name. There's their plastic names. There's their recycling number. There's the little triangle that signifies that we should recycle them. Very useful set of substances. The plastics, amazingly important to this 21st and the 20th century.